Uh, in a few minutes, I'll invite Al Sarah, a BD manage, manager, and together we're going to talk about the update to Google Play Instant since we launched Instant Games at I.O. Uh, just five months ago. I'll then invite Anne uh, from Small Giant Games onto stage, and she'll talk about her experience developing an Instant Game. So Google Play Instant, the idea was to really improve the user experience and then directly have a positive impact on developers' businesses. And let's start with the user side. So what is the user experience? Well, you click on a URL, or you click on Try Now, and you dive into a native experience. And this allows you to understand the game before you install. And it also gives opportunities for new discovery experiences beyond the Play Store. And we believe this is transformative to discovery. Because playing games is the right way to evaluate games. I don't think you've ever heard of someone saying, you have to play this game. Their app icon is amazing. You say, you have to, you have to play this game. I played it myself, and it's awesome. And that's basically how you do discovery. You play the game, and then you determine, do I want to spend hours and hours playing this game into the future? This is the exact way you should discover. And we believe this is the right evolution of the Play Store. So back in the day, you had the Android market, and you got a few beautiful icons to assess and install. Then we evolved, and we said, OK, what if we brought some of the strength of Google to the Play Store? personal recommendations, better search, a way for us to go deeper into the catalog as a user and discover more and more of what is possible on Android. And more recently, we uh, launched the Play Games app, which was our first foray into content-first experiences, where you saw pre-roll videos and starting to see the content that you'll get once you install. But the future of the Play Store is where it is purely content first, where you get to play the game first and then install. And that is the future, and that is what Google Play Instant provides the Play Store. And we're really excited about this because th this is not a new playbook. There's been precedent set in the media. Uh, every time that media becomes instant, consumption goes up, both the depth of consumption as well as the breadth. We've seen it with music. We've seen it with books. We've seen it with movies. We've also seen it with search. As we decrease latency, usage goes up. And we think that's an incredible thing for users because they get to experience more, but also for developers and what is possible to bring to users. So that's, that, that's the user side. Let's now talk about you, the developers. What is in it, what is in it for you? Well, with Google Play Instant, we're seeing better users coming through your pipeline, we're seeing more installs, and we're seeing more opportunities to bring your game onto different surfaces, not just the Play Store. When you have a URL link, you can bring it to many different surfaces. And the developer community, you, are responding extremely well. We've just been live for five months, and this is just a small part, number of the game developers who have adopted in that short period of time. And what we believe is possible with Google Play Instant is an extension of the whole developer life cycle. It doesn't matter where you are on your, for a specific game on this life cycle. If you're a new game that hasn't even launched, use pre-registration and use Try Now to drive that new usage even ahead of launching. Or it will decrease, decrease your feature development cost by trying out new features in Try Now and before you incorporate it into your installed game, testing it out and seeing if your audience is going to respond favorably to it. Or if maybe you're in the middle, you're, uh, one of your games has launched, and now you're just trying to get more users. You're trying to augment your user base. So this is a mechanism to reach new users that you might have not been able to reach in the past because they were fearful of that install friction. Or you have a mature game. And now you're thinking about, how do I bring back some of those churned users, people who have uninstalled? What type of experience can I provide them that is a new feature, a new level, something they haven't experienced yet, and it will bring them back to your game? One thing that we have emphasized from the get-go is that we might be a new platform trying to drive new discovery. 
but we want the developer tooling to be identical to what you have and used in the past for Android games. So it's the same game engines that you've used, the same tool chain, everything is the same, and we've worked really hard to make sure that convergence happens. And what that means is that any game that's live as an Android game can become an instant game. We've seen it with our top grossing games. We've seen it with AR games. We've seen it with some of our large games. So if you're 350 megs, if you're one gig, there is a path for you to become an instant game. And we've seen it with resource-strapped indie developers have found ways to launch through instant games. And we'll get more, more and more into that in the coming slides. With that, I want to invite Alistair up. He's going to talk about how you can get even more uplift and how we have figured out ways to decrease the developer costs as well. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Uh, so as you've seen, Instant Games is designed to be an integral part of all aspects of your game design. So any part of the life cycle, you can have an Instant Game made for it. So now you can expect to have bigger launches by reaching more users even easier before you actually bring your, your game to, to the store. And then, as you've seen, when you already have an existing title in your portfolio, why not, why not bring some more virality to it with an instant game? But I think what's also important to discuss now is surfacing and how we can do that in the store and how there's different areas for you, the developer, to show your instant game. So some of you here today, you're already going to be looking at instant games. And hopefully, all of you are going to be looking into it by the end of this presentation. But I think it's important that you should understand from the get-go that the Try Now button is really only scratching the surface of what the opportunity here is. There's various placements and collections in the Play Store. And then, of course, there's the all-important store listing page where you can work to really drive conversions on your page by having users try your game before they download it. Then there's the Play Games Arcade in the Play Games app. And this is a brand new surface where you're able to showcase your instant game and allow users to try it. And then, of course, is the, the old adage of social linking and virality. Why not have the option of letting your users share invites and invitations to clans, for example, with their friends and family? And I think what's really interesting is that we've been working very hard to expand instant games into new areas, such as premium and pre-registration. As some of you here will know, the premium games was previously just a screenshot and a video on your store listing page. But now we're very proud to say that you have the option of adding an instant game to this. And what's, what's super important and very exciting here is this can really increase your store conversion rate as you're giving the user the opportunity to try the game before they actually commit to purchasing that. And I think that that's really important as this lowers the crucial entry barrier to your title and also gives you, the developer, a real platform to showcase your premium games. And um, we've also worked hard on top of that to bring some pre-launch opportunities to instant games. And what's really exciting about this is that you're able to create virality around your game by adding it to your pre-registration before you've even launched your game. So why, not, why wouldn't you take advantage of this when you have the opportunity to drive sign-ups by creating virality and really you know, let, giving a first taste and a sneak peek of your game before it's even in the store? And I think this is going to be really integral going forward when you want to have a big launch and really create excitement and hype about your titles. And I think looking forward, this is also very important, is that coming this quarter, we have the ambition to launch the Games Room in the Play Games app. And this is really exciting, as this will give users a similar experience to what they know before with something browsing YouTube videos, for instance, but obviously with instant games. So this will be an immersive experience and it allows the users to seamlessly switch from game to game in the games room, not compromising on the game quality or the user experience at all. And you may be wondering how we managed to do that. So as we roll this out, uh, you will see that Instant Games, funnily enough, given the Instant in its title, is actually how it moves from game to game. And we're proud to say that this is due to a new feature that allows us to preload the subsequent games coming creating a seamless experience and making sure that you, the developer, don't have to compromise on the instant game and the instant experience that you've worked so hard to create. So I think we can both agree now that instant games and the opportunities it offers is pretty incredible. Um, there's a variety of applications that you can do with your instant games now, and this is only growing, and we're working hard to make it even easier for you to develop these games in-house. So if you can cast your mind back a little while to I.O., you may remember that we announced the Unity beta program and that the Unity plugin was available on GitHub. Well, today, any Unity developer 
can easily create an instant game and implement it on our store. And we're very happy to say that the plugin is available in the Unity Asset Store. And given the ease of this development, we're seeing significant adoption from Unity developers, with roughly 50% of the newly published instant games being Unity-based. And this is a similar story for Coco Studio. At I.O., we announced the alpha version, and today this is fully launched. And the IDE experience for Coco's instant games is phenomenal with a drag and select feature. And given the fact that Cocos is used by around 20% of developers, this really is great news. So you've seen our commitment to developing and innovating instant games and making it easier for you, the developer, to develop your own games. But we believe that this is an incredible opportunity that should be open to every single developer, regardless of size, engineering capacity, or even your technical ability. So I've shown you ways that you as a developer, using your own current tooling, are able to easily launch and implement uh, your own instant games. However, some of you simply might not have the resources to commit to development today. And you're not alone. We've heard this from a lot of developers. Fortunately, we're seeing a growing ecosystem of agencies, such as the ones here, who you can work with to develop an instant game. So if you don't have the development resources, you don't have to worry. You're not going to miss out. You can work with these agencies to develop your own instant game. And what's exciting here is that agencies like this are user acquisition and attribution experts, so they really know what they're doing, and they know how to drive installs to your titles. Jam City is just one example of many developers that you've seen that are utilizing agencies like this in order to create a unique instant experience. As we go forward, Google Play is we're going to work as hard as we can to implement and invest more in our game engines and work harder to make sure that we can really push forward the discovery of your instant games on the Play Store. We're going to work incredibly hard to make sure that we give you the best opportunity to innovate on this amazing technology. And we really are super excited to see where you're going to take this next. Now, I'm going to pass you back to Jonathan, who's going to take you through some of the impact that Instant Games can have for you in a little bit more detail. So uh, whoa, hello. Uh, I get to come back on stage just to talk about our successes, which is great, and talk about numbers. So let's dive into that. If you look at the top game developers, grossing game developers, 50% of them have already launched an instant game. So as I mentioned earlier on, adoption has really taken off. And we're really excited to see these numbers again in just five months of being live. And then if you look at just this week, so I just had to create the slide because I, I didn't even realize it until last night. There, all these games just started launching just this week. So additional game dev developers that have launched include Sega, Outfit7, NCSoft, Inno Games, and Double Down. So we're really excited just to see that we're at, we believe we're at this inflection point right now. I think App on Board alone launched eight games this week. So we're really excited to see all the adoption that's happening for instant games. And I, I took you through the different life cycle, uh, different life cycles, and how you can take advantage of instant games at each point. And we've already seen this done with, by Scopely. Scopely has basically converted their portfolio of games into instant games. So if you see for pre-registrations, they use uh, Looney Tunes Mayhem to use it for pre-registrations before they even launched. And then for uh, games that are just in the growth phase, like Wheel of Fortune and Walking Dead, they wanted to augment the user base, so they focused on try now and driving that virality. And then for their more mature game, like Yahtzee, they decided that they were going to try to bring back churn users by showing an experience that really excites the user who might have uninstalled it to get back into installing Yahtzee. Uh, for the pre-registration, this is our first example of using Try Now for pre-registration. And we already drove 20% of the installs, for, or sorry, 20% uh, of the pre-registrations were from instant games. And the conversion once you landed in an instant game was 53% to pre-registration. And this is a baseline. We haven't even optimized the, these numbers yet. So we're really excited to see this. And as we tune this, we expect the 53% number to increase significantly. But we also expect that as users start understanding what try now means and what the experience is going to be, you'll start seeing click-through rates increasing such that 20% can increase as well. Now, we're also seeing better users coming out the other end of instant games. So for uh, Jam City, Cookie, Jam Blast, they saw a 32% increase in day seven retention for users who installed after playing the instant game 
versus just the normal organic installations. And what about monetization? Well, Platica's House of Fun saw a 48% increase in revenue per install if the user had come through an instant game versus if they came through an organic installation. And for the indie developers in the audience, I think this is a, a huge value proposition for an indie developer. You've focused on a quality game, and you might, but you might not have the same brand recognition or same marketing dollars as some other game developers. So usually what happens when a user clicks try now for an indie game developer or an indie game is they're pleasantly surprised because you've invested in that quality of game. So they click on it and they end up installing at a high rate. We've seen this with Gun Gun having a 20% increase in user acquisition. Jungle Adventures 2 having an uh, almost 9% increase in user acquisition. And Bubble Shoot Pet having an 8% increase in user acquisition. Well, I obviously am excited about Google Play Instant because I'm the product manager for it. But I really think that you would benefit by hearing about how a game developers actually use Instant Games and develop for it. So I'd like to invite Ann Vu from Small Giant Games to talk about her experience with Google Play Instant. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi, I'm Ann. I'm the Director of Performance Marketing at Small Giant Games. Uh, we are a company based in Finland and have launched three games, including Empires and Puzzles, a top 10 grossing game in 100 countries, including the US. We also won the Best Breakthrough Hit Award by Google Play earlier this year. So today, I'm going to talk to you about how we use data to build our uh, instant game, what worked for us and what didn't, and some um, recommendations going forward. Um, conversion or organic conversion benchmark for the average RPG game is at 8% on Google Play. That means that over 90% of users who land at the app page do not download. And we know that through continuous A-B testing that app store optimization can only move the needle a little bit. Um, opt optimizing the app store conversion is especially crucial when running high budget UA campaigns. 70% um, of our UA budget goes towards driving traffic to the Google Play Store, so that we knew that we had to optimize the store conversion rate beyond just ASO testing. Um, the user acquisition funnel has a lot of friction at every step of the way, but the um, bridging the gap between decision and action was really key for us in optimizing user acquisi acquisition. Um, when we introduced playable ads compared to video ads, we saw 100% uh, 170% more installs, and we saw that the click-through rate, the, the click-to-install rate improved by 38%, thus um, increasing the overall um, efficiency of our UA campaigns by 25%. Uh, encouraged by our results, we were encouraged to take this experience and try to scale it as much as possible. How can we get as many users to be hooked by the, to this game in under a minute as possible. And this was around the time that Google Play introduced instant games. Um, we, were, we saw the opportunity when they introduced the Unity plugin, so we decided to make the instant game available to all users. Um, the question was how to distill this multifaceted game of base building, hero collecting, uh, match three, and PvP into a single memorable experience. That's when we used our performance data to collect um, uh, our, our experience to build an instant game. Uh, we partnered with an um, external developer called Sapia Games to build what we want to be a streamlined, optimized, but fun instant game experience. And analyzing the data, we took away some key learnings. Um, First of all, don't, don't cut corners. In this first example here, we saw that having a non-optimized um, tutorial does not convert users very well because it left users feeling confused and frustrated on not how, knowing how to play the game. Uh, we, solved, we solved this problem later on by scaling down the game board so that it's easier, but that didn't work out well either because the players dismissed it as being too simple and too basic. Um, and then the final step was um, getting the right mix of a immersive experience that's complex enough to hold the user's attention, as well as 
streamlined enough to play without a long tutorial. We also tested to see the visual appeal of the game. Uh, we found out that the player prefer battling a dragon over a random shark with knives walking on the beach. So getting the visual appeal of it was just as important as getting the mechanic right. We tested many different levels and bosses, and we found that experimenting with the difficulty rate or the win rate was very important in getting the users to convert. Our hypothesis was that if a user loses, he'll be more likely to download the game and try to beat it. So we create two versions of every single level. We've made a hard one and an easy one. And we, surprisingly, the easy one was more effective in converting users to download. Building on the complexity of the game, we wanted to create a meta game for the experience. So we moved away from a randomized sequence to a more um, coherent saga map, much like the real game. And um, this, this experience here saves your progress. So if you play two levels and then you don't install it, the next time that you interact with the instant game, it will take you to the boss at level three. Overall, we experimented with over 30 different versions to find the right complexity, length, difficulty, and visual appeal of the game. So if you want to get started, I would recommend finding, <laughs> finding a developer who's experienced in game design and who has the technical know-how to build many different ideas and concepts and iterate on those ideas to collect data. Using that data, then, you can kind of find the right length, complexity, visual appeal, and difficulty to build your game. Um, you don't want to cut corners because you want to instantly wow the, uh, the users with the first-time experience. Thank you.